morning. Our first prelude is number 556. Our next prelude is in your additional music guide, page 5, We Walk by Faith. Oh. 
Today is the 14th Sunday of Ordinary Time. May we all welcome in our midst Father Mitchell, our Mass celebrant for today. May we all stand. Our opening hymn is number 483. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary of her Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. O God, who in the abasement of your Son have raised up a fallen world, fill your faithful with holy joy. For on those you have rescued from slavery to sin, you bestow eternal gladness. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. As the Lord spoke to me, the Spirit entered into me and set me on my feet. And I heard the one who was speaking say to me, Son of man, I am sending you to the Israelites, rebels who have rebelled against me. They and their ancestors have revolted against me to this very day. Hard of face and obstinate of heart are they to whom I am sending you. But you shall say to them, Thus says the Lord God, and whether they heed or resist, for they are a rebellious house, they shall know that a prophet has been among them. The word of the Lord. with the mockery of the arrogant, with the contempt of the proud. Our eyes are fixed on the Lord, pleading for His mercy. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, that I, Paul, might not become too elated because of the abundance of the revelations, a thorn in the flesh was given to me, an angel of Satan to beat me, to keep me from being too elated. Three times I begged the Lord about this, that it might leave me. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for power is made perfect in weakness. I will rather boast most gladly of my weaknesses in order that the power of Christ may dwell with me. Therefore, I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and constraints for the sake of Christ. 
For when I am weak, then I am strong. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory Jesus departed from there and came to his native place, accompanied by his disciples. When the Sabbath came, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were astonished. They said, Where did this man get all this? What kind of wisdom has been given him? What mighty deeds are wrought by his hands? Is he not the carpenter, the son of Mary, and the brother of James and Joseph and Judas and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor, except in his native place and among his own kin and in his own house. So he was not able to perform any mighty deed there, apart from curing a few sick people by laying his hand on them. He was amazed at their lack of faith. The Gospel of the Lord. Every time I preach on this Gospel passage, I remember the first time that I spoke on it. It was 45 years ago. I had been ordained less than a month. It was my first homily and my first priestly assignment, which happened to be in the parish in which I had grown up. Now, to the best of my knowledge, however, I did not get the same reaction as Jesus did when he first preached in his own neighborhood. And perhaps that is because there was nothing too extraordinary about my preaching itself. So perhaps it was not that I was any less honored in my home parish. It was that the honor, at least at that point, was somewhat limited. I was young and inexperienced, and I'm sure my preaching reflected that. Today's scriptures do give us cause to reflect a bit on the basic concept of prophecy with the gospel passage noting a prophet is not without honor except in his native place and among his own kin and in his own house. And our first reading spoke of the role of prophet as well. The passage related Ezekiel's call to go out and to begin his prophetic ministry. I still think that many people in general have a narrow view of the meaning of prophecy. So often in general literature, prophecy is associated with predicting the future. And while it is true that the prophets whose work is presented in the Old Testament of the Bible did speak of the future, that was incidental to the vocation itself. The word prophet itself means one who speaks for God and one who speaks on God's behalf. And it is true, often when the prophet spoke on God's behalf, there was a strong future orientation to their words. 
They would often warn about, they would predict, the consequences of being unfaithful to God, the consequence of setting aside their relationship with God. But they would also speak of the promises of God, the graces, the blessings that he wanted to give and would give to his people. Now, not everyone who identified themselves as a prophet necessarily spoke on God's behalf. And that caused problems for the authentic prophets, because often rulers would, in essence, hire their own prophets, who were good at telling the leader what they wanted to hear, that he was doing the right thing. And so that all the more, aside, uh, ma that made the authentic prophet look bad when he warned of dire consequences because the leader was not doing good, especially when it involved being unfaithful to God. Now, given this understanding of prophet, we can all the more appreciate how Jesus was the ultimate prophet. Who could better speak on God's behalf than Jesus Christ, God in human flesh. In Catholic and Christian literature from the earliest centuries, Jesus' identification as prophet is spoken of as part of a threefold role that included being a priest and a king. Now, further in our Catholic teaching, each one of us, reborn in baptism and reconfigured to be one with Jesus Christ, take on our own responsibility to share in the work of being priest and prophet and king. As a priest, we all offer the spiritual sacrifice of our prayers in good works, united to the one great sacrifice of Jesus Christ on the cross, especially when we gather for Mass. And as king, we seek to bring the world under the reign of Jesus Christ. We seek to have the world live by Jesus' rules because they are based on truth, and well, truth works. As prophets, each one of us is expected to speak on God's behalf in our own world. It is our prophetic responsibility that is the subject to today's readings. Now, there are two very important resources that are needed in order to fulfill our prophetic responsibility. First, if we are going to speak on God's behalf, we need to be very familiar with what God has revealed to us. And for we Catholics, that means familiarity with the sacred scriptures and the teaching of the church, especially as it is digested in the catechism of the Catholic Church. At the same time, with equal intensity, if we are going to speak on God's behalf, then we must do everything we can to maintain a vibrant and growing relationship with God. That means vigorous attention to our daily prayer and to our week weekly gathering for worship here in the Mass. It refers to regular sacramental practices, all of which are channels of grace in the life of the Holy Spirit. Well, to whom are we to prophesy? Well, to whomever we can, in one way or another, in word or example. Parents are powerful prophets to their children. Spouses are prophets to one another. We should all be prophetic to siblings, to friends, to coworkers, and even to strangers on occasion. Of course, it is not easy in our second reading, we were reminded that as blessed as St. Paul was for his work of speaking for God, he suffered. He spoke of an angel of Satan, some affliction that he endured amidst his work. And the scholars speculate on just what that might have been. Maybe it was a difficult relationship. Maybe it was a physical ailment. Or maybe it was a profound temptation. Being prophetic is particularly difficult in a culture where it seems increasingly that we are expected to abandon the notion that God has created the world and human persons with meaning and purpose that must be respected for the sake of true happiness. I know I don't like having to say things that 
I think will upset or even anger some people. The gospel noted that a prophet is not without honor. It does not suggest the what and how of being honored for speaking on God's behalf. The honor may be something we really can't fully appreciate or enjoy until we have moved on to our eternal embrace with our fellow and leading prophet, Jesus Christ. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, life from life, true God from true God, begotten and not man, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Jesus was rejected by his own people in faith. We accept him as our Lord and Savior, and we pray in his name. For our bishop and his prophetic ministry to teaching the Catholic faith, let us pray to the Lord. Lord For those who serve society and police and fire forces, let us pray to the Lord. Lord For the elderly and those with disabilities who find Christ's power in their weakness, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, For deeper devotion to Mary in our community, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, For those who have died in Christ, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, In your goodness, Father, hear the petition of a believing people through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Sorry, him is number five five nine.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May this oblation dedicated to your name purify us, O Lord, and day by day bring our conduct closer to the life of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with Lift up your heart. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord. Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through his paschal mystery he accomplished the marvelous deed by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death, summoning us to the glory of being now called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for your own possession, to proclaim everywhere your mighty works, for you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus. have created rightly gives you praise for through your son our Lord Jesus Christ by the power and working of the Holy Spirit you give life to all things and make them holy and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name therefore Lord we humbly implore you by the same spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, uh, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, uh, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. <clears throat> the mystery of faith we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. But we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim, 
By his death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on his constant intercession in your presence, we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and Paul our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, to all who were pleading to you at their path from this life, you cried admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. <clears throat> Through him and with him and in him. O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who we'll live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. But only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
for those who are unable to receive the Eucharist at this time, I offer you the spiritual communion prayer, act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you, Lord. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Our communion hymn is in the handout, Awit ng Paghahangad.
your additional music guide, page 5. Taste and see. <laughs> Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that having been replenished by such great gifts, we may gain the prize of salvation and never cease to praise you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Is somebody making announcements? No? I guess. We had an announcement at the last Mass. The Lord be with you. And May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended.
sending forth song is in the additional music guide, page one. Beautiful Savior. <laughs> 